The angels beckon me to heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Amen. This world is not our home. Amen. The people of this world are really not your friends. The same salvation that changed your life and made you who you are this morning can change their life. He's interested in you touching Him this morning and Him touching you and Him ministering to you and Him helping you. Welcome to Naked Pentecostalism. I'm your host, Isaac Coverstone. Welcome to another episode of Naked Pentecostalism. Today, I wanted to discuss a topic that came up in the Facebook discussion group that I'm a part of that's centered around uh, discussing the resurrection of Jesus, which I'm primarily there to be the you know, the negative Nancy that tries to shoot down all their ideas. And there's a there's a really interesting back and forth that's kind of developed on one important aspect of this discussion. And that is and that is the discussion about how we determine whether something is a historical fact. And so uh, there's a couple of factors to this. You know, the the quality of the source is pretty important. So if, if we just have, for example, what we call a single source, this is one historian, one eyewitness recording a particular event, and we have no other corroboration from any other uh, individuals, any other, um, you know, even even a couple of years before or after that account, if we have nothing at all except that one person's testimony, that is considered, you know, in my opinion, pretty weak. So the problem that arises is we have very little documentation for a lot of events in ancient history. So the same problem it can be applied to all of them that do we really have good reason to believe that Nero existed or that Alexander the Great existed and so on and so forth? Some of these we have better evidence than others. Uh, some of these individuals had coins made with their their likeness or they had sculptures made and we have maybe multiple historical records. So there's varying degrees of evidence. But the question really comes down to if you only have this very small number of sources, let's say one or two um, strong, reliable eyewitness accounts, or at the, at the very least, you know, you just have one or two uh, written accounts about something, whether that person's credible or not, that's kind of not always easy to pin down. But this is kind of... The, this is where the case for the resurrection is made or broken. It, it all revolves around, should we just believe something because we have this small number of, of written accounts? And the argument that came up, or that is being presented by the theist side of it, is really, are you okay throwing out most of ancient history? You know, just do you also not believe that Julius Caesar and Shakespeare and all these other historical figures, do you not believe that they existed? You know, because we have kind of, sort of, depending on the specifics, kind of sort of the same information and evidence for any of these. So the answer that comes back is, yes, we're perfectly fine not believing a significant amount of ancient history because we want to be consistent in how we're interpreting and, and examining the evidence. On the other hand, the theist side, we have this this huge, in my opinion, this huge discrepancy and, and double standard because they'll accept a story about the apostles or Jesus or any of these other characters based on one or two sources, which is pretty much the new Testament and 
the majority of the New Testament is written by either Paul or Peter. It kind of boils down to those two people, with a handful of exceptions. So, on the same hand, if you have this historical account of the Emperor of Japan was a divine being, you know, and that's that's how they're referred to in the records. There's no question that they are historical people. We know they existed. We have records of, um, you know, their their decisions and documents maybe they wrote, or in the case of the 20th century, late 19th century, we have photographs maybe and maybe videos of, of the emperors that were reigning or the emperor that was reigning at that time period. So we don't we don't necessarily believe that they were divine beings, but we know they existed. So there's a case where the Christians are going to throw out the supernatural elements of a claim, that's historical, about a real person that we know for sure existed. And so we, we apply that same standard and say, okay, well, you know, we can make the, we can take the position that Jesus existed, and that's fine. I, I think that's reasonable and that's acceptable. We can take the position that Peter and Paul and James and Matthew and Luke, these are all real people, but we don't necessarily have to accept that they did these amazing feats of magic, you know, that, that the blind were able to see and the lame walked and, and the whatever, you know, that these events were all 100% legitimate. And that's really what it comes down to is kind of this double standard, you know, like us on the skeptic side, we are rejecting any and all supernatural claims. It doesn't matter what part of history or where they came from or whatever. And even, even the normal life, the normal kind of claims about, okay, you know, King so-and-so existed in this time period and King so-and-so invaded this country, da, 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 really mundane stuff. We can still question whether that's real, whether that's accurate, whether it's actually historical, even though it's not even a supernatural claim, we'll still say, hey, look, there's only one source for this. We don't necessarily have to accept that that concept, um, that story. So on the flip side, we have theists who want to say, we have one or two sources for the story, therefore we're going to believe it 100% that's fact. And then they'll take another historical document, you know, let's let's look at, you know, Romulus or Remus, and, you know, these are claimed to be supernatural beings, and and we're going to reject that story because we don't agree with it, or any number of miracle claims from the Muslims or the Hindus or the Buddhists or any of these other religions that we don't like, we're just going to throw those out, but we're going to accept the miracle claims of our favorite story and, and, and whatever it's, it's, it's a lack of consistency. And it's very obvious to me that it's the Christians who want to have their cake and eat it too. They want to believe the miracle claims that are barely substantiated by evidence and reject anything else that kind of sort of has the same quality to it, the same number of sources, the same number of attestations, so, and, and, and that's, that's where the rubber meets the road, is trying to get them to admit that and to see that kind of uh, lack of honesty, lack of intellectual honesty. So, I don't know where that's going to lead, but we're, we're just hashing that out in the discussion group. Um, if you want to join the conversation, you know, feel free to shoot me a message on Facebook or Instagram or any other social media, and I can drop you a link to the Resurrection of Jesus discussion group. It's kind of fun to be a part of that and, and get in the middle of it and challenge the ideas being thrown around. So that's pretty much what it boils down to, though, is, is what do we accept as historical? And, you know, my position has always been, look, there's, there's lots and lots of these claims across all of history we we've we've had humans making all these wild stories for as long as we've had written language but 
any historian will tell you, look, we're automatically going to throw out anything that has magic in it. King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Court or whatever, the Round Table, they're, they're most likely like this fictional story. Maybe there really was a, a real person named King Arthur, but can't even prove that necessarily. But there most definitely wasn't a magician named Merlin who was, you know, conjuring beings and casting spells or whatever because we have no real evidence that magic exists in our world. So we have no reason to believe that based on limited attestation. Yeah, so it just comes down to consistency. We want to apply the same standard across the board and treat everything by the same token and just... You know, that's all we're asking for is let's do the same thing across all these different claims. So that's pretty much all I had today. Just wanted to bring up that kind of tidbit from our hashing that out and trying to resolve the issue of the resurrection, which probably will never happen, but who knows? Anyway, thanks for listening, guys. Appreciate everyone tuning in, and we'll see you next time. God's able to work out the trouble in your life. He's able to work out the problems that you deal with. God loves you. God cares about you. God's going to change